see. We're back in we're back in business. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. Amen. Amen. I just I just want to make sure where we are right now. We're able to continue to go forward. As others are entering into the sanctuary, I just want to just to praise God and we just bless God and we just thank God that we're able to continue going through with this message. Amen. Listen, how many of you know that the devil sometimes get in, it gets in the way? He doesn't want the message to be told, especially a message like this, informing the children of God that God said that you're blessed through his word. You are blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, listen, uh, I'm, I am going to start the message over. I praise God. I thank God. If, if you have the, the time, if not, then you can come back and view it again later at your own uh, earliest convenience. Uh, and I just know that you're going to be blessed through this message. Amen. Amen. So again, I just give praise and honor to God. And I just want, to, just want to clear the atmosphere right now. I just want to clear the atmosphere. So, Heavenly Father, we bless your name right now. Heavenly Father, we give you praise right now. Heavenly Father, we glorify your name right now. Knowing that there's nothing else that we can do of our own, O oh Lord. So, we just invite your presence into this atmosphere now, Father. And we just look to you from where all our help comes from, O oh Lord. We know, Father, that it's the devil's desire to just stop the word of God from going forward. But we give you praise anyhow, Lord, because we know that your word must go it must leave it must do what it was purposed to do so if you we just praise you now we thank you and we bless you and we give god all the honor all the glory and everything we do we touch and agree right now god that your will will be done through this message that it will be a blessing an enlightenment a life-changing word to whoever receives it in jesus name amen amen all right listen I, I thank you all for coming back. As I said, that we we've had a little technical difficulty, um, and if you are if you are not able to stay throughout the entire message, that's okay. Listen, it's going to be here for you. You can still upload it. You can still pass it around to your friends and let someone else hear this message. Because listen, this message is a life changing message. Amen. So. Without further further uh, a delay, I just want to get in, and I thank you again for your time. I thank you for your patience. As I said, I don't take it lightly knowing that you could be doing any other thing right now, but you stopped out of your busy schedule to spend time with us here at Manor from Heaven Ministries, so we praise God for you, and we thank God for you right now. Amen. So our opening scripture is going to be from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. And, of course, my, my version of reading is the New American Standard Version, so it may be a little different than that, what you're used to hearing. But we praise God and we believe, God, that you're going to get blessed through this message anyhow. Amen? Amen. So listen, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, and it says, Now in the sixth month, the uh, angel Gabriel was sent to God to a city in Gal Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, the, of the descendants of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favorite one, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Listen, how many of you know, I just want to take a few minutes, whether or not you've known it, whether or not someone else has already told you, I want you to take a few minutes and tell you, I want you to tell yourself that you're blessed. You're blessed. This is what God wants you to know in his word. He says that you're blessed. You're blessed. Maybe someone else didn't tell you that today, but I want to be the one who informs you that the word of God declares that you are blessed. You're blessed. Listen. Listen. If I can go back over to 28 verse again, it tells us, it says, and coming in, talking about Gabriel, the angel. When Gabriel comes in, he's coming to bring you a message, all right? He's the messenger of God. Hallelujah. Listen. So Gabriel comes into the room and he tells Mary, he says, uh, uh, coming in, he's talking to her and he says, um, Mary, greetings, favorite one. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. How many of you know that the word favor represents blessed? So God is actually telling, Gabriel is actually telling Mary, he says, uh, he could have started off the conversation in this way, saying, greetings, blessed one, the Lord is with you. Whether or not you realize it, you are blessed of God, and God is with you. He's with you. No matter where it is you are, 
situated in the world today. If you're in a fiery furnace, if you're, if you're headed up to here with the water, the Lord is with you. He's with you. And because he's with you, you're still favored. Because he's with you, you're still blessed. You're blessed. Listen. In case, in case you missed it, I, 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 you, you know, like I said, we've been having a, a technical difficulty, but I want to let you know that the title of the message is called Because I'm Blessed. And sometimes when you're sitting in the church right now, they, the, 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 the person bringing the word, the pastor or whatever, would tell you to turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor this. Turn and tell your neighbor that. Well, right now, you don't need to turn to anyone but to yourself. Touch yourself. Grab yourself. Tell yourself that I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You see, this is a word that you must be able to receive for yourself. Knowing that you are blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. So, so you don't have to tell anyone else that. But it's time that you start telling yourself that I'm blessed. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6, it tells us, it says, Praise to the glory of God. Praise to the glory of his grace. Wherein he has made us and accepted us in the beloved. That scripture is telling us that God has made us. God has created us and he's accepted us. In the beloved. The beloved is Jesus. God has accepted us in the beloved. And when reading that word uh, uh, accepted, the Greek word for accepted is charito, which means that, which means grace, which means to be endowed uh, uh, with special honor, to be make accepted or highly favored. So when you get an understanding or revelation of that scripture now, Gabriel is walking in and he's telling Mary, he's telling her, he says that, that uh, the scripture could actually read this way. He came and he said that he, talking about God, has made us highly favored in the beloved. God has made us highly favored in the beloved, the beloved of Jesus. And God has made us highly favored in Jesus. There's nothing that we've done ourselves. We, 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 the Bible lets us know that there is none without sin. There is none who is righteous. No, not one. So there's nothing that we've done of ourselves. We can't say that God owes us anything. God owes us nothing. God has already done for us more than we could ever ask to be repaid. We can never repay God back for what he's done for us. But the scripture lets us know that the angel came in and he tells Mary, he said that, that you have been highly favored. The Lord has highly favored you. He's blessed you. You're blessed beyond measure. Blessed beyond measure. So, so when he comes in, he tells her, he says back to uh, the scripture, uh, Luke one twenty eight. when the angel came in, he came in and he said to her, Hail, thou art favored, highly favored. Highly favored. And that's exactly what God is telling you and I today. God wants us to know that we're highly favored. You're highly favored. You're blessed of God. You're blessed of God. Mary was blessed and highly favored because she was chosen by God to do what no one else was able to do. No one else was able to do but, but what Mary was chosen to do. God had chosen her to carry Jesus in her womb. How many of you know that Jesus is the living word of God? And God had chosen Mary to carry the word through her womb. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Listen, how many of you know that at this time when Mary was pregnant, any other woman who was pregnant at that time, excuse me, any other married woman who was pregnant, because this is where the prophecy, any other woman who was married at the time when Mary was pregnant, all the women who were pregnant at that time and were married, the key word is married. Because God is a God of order, all right? He's not just going to be out here willy-nilly just saying anyone can have the, bring forth the Messiah. No. But any woman who was married and was pregnant at that time when Mary was pregnant, they were expecting their pregnancy to bring forth a man-child. And a man-child or a boy-child would have been that which of the prophecy that Isaiah spoke in 400 years ago, saying, to unto us a child will be born, a child will be given. So they knew the prophecy. So any woman who was married and pregnant during that time, she was hoping that her pregnancy would be the one that would bring forth this prophecy. So if the other women had known that Mary was the one that God had chosen, I'm quite sure that they would have been jealous of Mary. I'm quite sure that they would have had a little ought against Mary. And they would have probably had a little ought against God, truth be told, because they would have wanted to know, God, why did you choose her? Why not me? What was wrong with my womb? What was wrong with my husband? We were, we were betrothed too. Why did you choose her over me? And this is what I want you to know, that favor ain't fair, but God chose you. God chose to give it to you. And because of the favor, because of the blessings upon your life, 
Somebody's going to hate on you because of the blessing. Somebody is not going to be happy with you because God chose to bless you. Whether or not you want to receive it to hear it, I'm telling you that somebody is not going to be happy. Listen, if the other women would have known that Mary was pregnant uh, and she was carrying the Messiah, I'm quite sure that they would have been had an issue with Mary. They would have wanted to know because, listen, Mary didn't ask for it, but God chose Mary. And God came in and, and had Gabriel come and tell Mary, he says, Mary, this is what the scripture tells, that Mary, you are blessed and highly favored. And the Lord had chose you. He chose you to do what all the other women were waiting to do. But God chose you. And the same as it is with your life right now, God chose you. Out of anyone else who's being blessed, everyone's blessed to one degree or another, but God chose you for a special blessing that no one else is able to receive but you. That's your blessing. That's what you cherish. That's what you hold on to. That's what you ponder in your heart because that's what God has blessed you with. Amen? So listen. The Bible tells us that Mary was blessed and highly favored to do what God had chosen her to do, which was to carry Jesus, the living word, in her womb, in her womb. My question I want to ask to you this morning is, what does it mean to be favored? What does it mean? What does it mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Listen, it means that you're blessed beyond measure. When you're, when you're favored, you're blessed beyond measure. You're blessed by God, even when you know you don't deserve it. And this is what I want you to know. You don't deserve it. This is what I want you to understand. You don't deserve it. We don't deserve anything from God. Because if God never did anything else for us, he's already done enough. And sending Jesus and the, uh, the, uh, the shedding of his blood, if that's not enough for you, then you don't need, there's nothing else God can really do. But God chooses to do things in our lives now, not because we deserve it, because he, he, he wants to see himself in us. He wants to see himself in us. Listen, God blesses you. And, 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 and when you're blessed beyond measure, whether or not you deserve it, God did it. God did it. You may, you may think that you're uh, de deserving of it, but God lets us know that we don't deserve anything because he's already given us Jesus. He's given us his best in Jesus. But when you're blessed beyond measure, what God does is God looks beyond your ability and God says, I'm going to bless you. When you're blessed beyond measure, God looks beyond whether or not you qualify and God says, I'm going to bless you. When you're blessed beyond measure, God blesses you because he sees himself in you. He sees your inability and he sees his ability. He sees your inability sufficiency and he sees his sufficiency because God blesses you you're blessed beyond measure you're blessed beyond measure what do you mean listen the scripture tells us in 2nd Corinthians 3 5 it says our sufficiency is in him in who in God our sufficiency is in God it's nothing of ourselves we have insufficiency but the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 3, 5, our sufficiency is of him, meaning it is of God. And guess what? God is not a man that he should lie. When God tells you that your sufficiency is of him, it is of you. It is of him. It is of him. You can stand on the word of God. You can stand on it. When, when God says that you're blessed, he says you're blessed. You can stand on it. You can stand on it. But what does it mean when, 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 when you're highly favored? What does it mean when God blesses you beyond measure? It means that everything that you do is going to prosper. That's right. Whatever it is you do, it's going to prosper. It's going to prosper. Listen. When others around you seem to be failing, when they seem to be falling down, God said there's a raising up in you. Why? Because his sufficiency is in you. Because his spirit is in you. So they may be going down. Businesses may be going down all around you. But your business is thriving. Your ministry is thriving. Everything that is connected to you from God is rising up. And others are seen to be going down. That ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. But God chose you. He chose you. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Bless his name. Listen, others are, 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 are failing. They're making losses. You're making gains. Others are going down. You're like selling up. It makes no difference. Why? Because you're God's man. You're God's woman. You're God's person. You're his child. And God's word has been spoken over your life. And guess what? He said that you are going to prosper in all things that you apply your hands to because it's the word of God that's been spoken over your life. It's his word. It's his word. It's his word. It's the word of God. Listen, listen. He tells us that we're going to be sufficient in all things of him. Being favored, being blessed by God. It means that the favor of God is being manifested on your behalf. And because the favor of God is being manifested on your behalf, guess what now? Doors of opportunity supernaturally open for you. 
things are supernaturally happening right now, even as you're listening to this message. Why? Because of the favor of God upon your life. Because you're blessed beyond measure. It's nothing that you've done of your own, but it's what God chose to do for you. God chose to do it for you. That's why, that's why doors of opportunity are being opened for you, which can supernaturally not be explained. They can't, you can't even human reason telling people why you're so blessed. You don't know why you're so blessed. Only thing you can say is that it's because of God. It's because of God. That's the only reason why I'm blessed. I had nothing to do with it. It's because of God. Favor ain't fair, but God chose you. He chose you. He chose you. Listen. You can't explain it. The scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 2.9, it tells us, it says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's nothing about you anymore. It's not about you. But the scripture makes it plain to us that God is able. That's it right there. You can close the book and shut the door because God is able. And since God is able, what is he able? It says he's able to make all grace abound towards you. Grace. That's why you're favored. That's why you're blessed. It's nothing that you've done. It's nothing that I've done. But it's because of what God has done for you. And God says, I'm able to make all grace abound towards you. Listen, if you got favor with God, you have favor with man. And this is why even those who try to keep you down can't understand it. This is why you can't explain it. It's not humanly possible for me to explain it. But the word of God tells me that God is able to make all grace. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. All grace abound toward me. That, that, that you... Having all sufficiency in all things. All sufficiency. Meaning you're not lacking a thing. Meaning you have more than enough. Meaning you have overflow. Meaning that you have an abundance. Meaning that you have sufficiency. Always having overflow. Always having abundance. Always having more than enough in all things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have more than enough in all things pertaining to life and godliness. God has saw to it. His word is true. You can stand on it. There's nothing that you can do about it. You can't be voided out of it. God has blessed you. And he said, not only do I bless you, but I provide all grace. He said, I'm able to make all grace abound towards you. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen. I don't know what it does. <laughs> I don't know what it is that you need to get excited about when it comes to the word of God. But all he, he don't even have to speak anymore. All God has to do is breathe and I receive it. Hallelujah. Because listen, if I couldn't receive it that way, then I wouldn't be here today. Because there's breath in my body. Not mine, but his. He, he, he's the one that touched me to allow the breath to be in these lungs. That I'm able to do what I'm able to do when my eyes open up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word lets us know that God is able to make all grace abound towards me. Causing me to have a fist of sufficiency in all things. Not lacking a thing because the hand of God is upon my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To glory to God. Listen, the Bible lets us know. That God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That's, that's, that's from the heavenly realms down to the earthly realm. There's nothing that you can do about it. God is the one. He said that I'm going to grace you. That means that you're going to have sufficiency. That means that you're going to have abundance. Not going to have, but if you start really looking at it from the, from the uh, spiritual to the supernatural, it didn't say you're going to have it. He says you have it. God is able. Is. It's happening right now. Didn't say God will make it. He said, he, he, he's, he is, he is. Don't the, isn't that the same word that, that, that the scripture tells us that those who come to God must believe that he is? He is what? He is. He is. Whatever you want to put behind the is, that's what he is. He is. So if God is, hallelujah, he's what? He's able. He's what? He's a rewarder. He's what? He's faithful. He's what? He's, he's God. He's God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You need to know that it's God's desire for you to be blessed beyond measure. You need to know that it's God's desire for you to be blessed with an abundance. You need to know that it's God's desire for you to be blessed with overflow. It's God's desire. It's his desire to bless you beyond measure. And guess what? You've already received it. Hallelujah. You've already see it. You received it. Listen, the psalmist tells us in five uh, Psalm 5:12. it says, for you, talking about God. The psalmist talks to God and he says, 
For you bless the righteous person, Lord. You surround him with favor as a shield. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do you understand what the psalmist is saying? That God blesses the righteous person. You are the righteous person. You're the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. And the Bible lets us know, the psalmist is telling us, that God blesses the righteous person. He surrounds them. He blessed them with a, a favor as a shield. A shield, a shield that you can put in the front of you, a shield that covers you from your head to the bottom of your feet, a shield that blocks the enemy's darts as they come from the left and from the right. God blesses you with favor as a shield. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Listen, this is what God wants you to see. He wants you to get the revelation of his word that says that you are blessed. It wasn't that word wasn't just given to Mary. The angel did Gabriel didn't just tell Mary, but he's telling you too that you're blessed and you're blessed beyond measure. Listen, you need to when you wake up in the morning, you need to be able to tell yourself that. Listen, when you wake up every time you open your eyes, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Nothing that I deserve is what God has given unto me. Every morning when you open your eyes as you stand in front of a mirror, you're supposed to be able to see a blessed person looking back at you. Nobody's gonna tell you you're blessed. Your enemy is not going to tell you you're blessed. The devil is not going to tell you you're blessed. But God says you're blessed and you need to believe it. You need to believe it. You need to believe it. Listen. You need to, as you're standing there in the mirror in the morning, and you open the, and you open your eyes and you look in the, you look in the mirror, you should be able to see a blessed person staring back at you. Oh, you 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 only receive that word when you hear Mary J say it, right? That she likes what she sees when she's looking at me when she's past, walking past the mirror. No, that's your proclamation. That's something you need to stand on. That you like what you see when you're looking at you when you're walking past the mirror. And as a matter of fact, when I walk past the mirror, I stop and I stay and I say. You look good. Boy, God has done a work on you. You are not what you used to be, but you're looking better today. And if it's God's will tomorrow, you'll be looking even better. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Listen, you better like what you see when you're looking at you when you're walking past a mirror. Don't let Mary J steal your, steal your joy. That's your joy. That's what God told you. You need to remind yourself. Every day you open your eyes that you are blessed and highly favored. You're not speaking from an area of conceit, but you're speaking of an area of, 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 of acknowledgement and expanding on the word of God. You didn't make yourself blessed. God made you blessed. He called you blessed. He separated you out from the world, brought you into himself, into his marvelous light, and told you that you're blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen. Like I said, you need to remind yourself these things. You need to tell yourself these things that I am blessed. I am blessed and I'm not cursed. Why? Because no one else is going to tell you that. No one else is going to tell you that you're blessed. So you need to remind yourself. When you open your eyes in the morning, you need to remind yourself that you're blessed. And guess what? Today is going to be the best day of my life. What happened yesterday? I don't care. But today is the day that the Lord has made. And this day. It's going to be the best day of my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why? Because I'm blessed. Because I'm blessed. That's what the scripture, that's what, that's what the message is today. It's because I'm blessed. It's because I'm blessed. Now let me tell you something. As I said, if other women would have known at that time that Mary's pregnancy, if they, if they would have known that she was carrying the Messiah, I truly believe that they would have been jealous of her. I truly believe that they would have been jealous of Mary. I, 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 and the reason why I say that is because of this. As I said, favor ain't fair, but God chose you. Listen, Mary didn't ask for this, but God chose her. And, and, and whether or not you realize it, when God chooses to bless you, some people ain't going to be happy for you. People aren't happy because you're happy, because you're blessed. They don't want to know about your blessings. They can care less to hear that you're blessed because, listen, they're blessed too, but they don't acknowledge their blessing. God blesses every one of his children. Your blessings may not be my blessings, so you enjoy what God has given unto you. My blessings are not yours, but I enjoy what God has given to me. And this is what you need to do. Stay in your lane. Enjoy what it is that God has given to you. To whom much is given, much is required. That means that you still got some things to do with what God has blessed you with. And when God blesses you, guess what? Whoever, whom the Lord bless, he has no sorrow. So if you jumped out here now and you bought a house that you couldn't afford to pay for, don't tell anybody that the Lord has blessed you with that house. And then the next day we find out that the houses are, are being uh, repoed. Your car is now being pulled off the parking lot when you went to work and you shout and scream at everybody, look what the Lord has done. No, the Lord didn't do that. You did it to yourself and you put yourself in that predicament. Whom the Lord bless, he adds no sorrow, no sorrow, no sorrow. But let me tell you, you know something. 
also whom the Lord blessed, people don't like. People get jealous of you because of your blessings. I know you didn't want to hear it that way, but the people are jealous. And guess what? Church folk get jealous too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Church folk get jealous to know that you're blessed. They know that you're blessed beyond measure, but they don't see their blessings. They don't want to get their testimony, but then when they hear your testimony, now all of a sudden they, their face becomes like a prune. They, they, they squeeze all up like somebody sucking on a lemon. Why? Because they don't want to hear about your testimony. Oh, I know this is the place where you're supposed to be able to come and give your testimony because the Bible tells us that we're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and through our testimonies. But guess what? Whether or not you realize it, church folk don't want to hear your testimony. They don't, they don't want to hear it. They, they know that your testimony is going to bring forth a breakthrough. They know that your testimony is going to set someone else free. But yet and still, church folk don't want to hear your testimony. They don't want to hear about it. Listen, listen. I, I know. And you know what I'm saying is true. A, a, a sister girl goes into the church. She wants to stand up and give a testimony. And somebody automatically says, uh, uh, why don't they just sit down? They always coming up talking about their testimony. They always talking about how good God has been to them. God, Like God ain't doing nothing else for nobody else in here. Well, then you stand up and tell somebody what God is doing for you. I don't want everybody in here to know all my business. That's your attitude. So, so, so now, so now when, when somebody stands up, Sister Maybell stands up and she wants to talk about how blessed she is. She wants to talk about how blessed her business is. She wants to talk about how blessed her children is. You sit there with your sanctified self and say she needs to go somewhere and sit down because you don't want to hear it. But you don't want to share your testimony because you say, I don't want them to be all in my business. It's not about being in your business if God did it. Because God has given you a testimony that's going to help somebody, that's going to lift somebody's spirit, that's going to set some captives free based on what it was that you've gone through. But you sit there now, you don't want to hear her testimony. Listen, whenever you give your testimony, you're not boasting in yourself, but you're boasting in the thing that the Lord has done for you. You're only giving credence. You're only giving acknowledgement of what God has done in my life. Now, when you sit there and you watch these award shows, and everybody gets up and says, I want to thank my Lord and Savior for allowing me to receive this award. You know good and darn well that they ain't got no relationship with the Lord. But here's somebody in the church house who you know has been going through some things, and they want to stand up and give a testimony and give a glory to God of what God has done in their life, and you sit there with your sanctified self and say they need to sit down. No, you need to sit down. You need to get a, a heart check and an attitude check because you're the one that's out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. Listen. Listen. God's favor, uh, when, 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 because of God's favor upon your life, that's the blessing of God. And the word lets us know whom the Lord bless. He adds no sorrow. It's the blessings of God that makes one rich. God makes you rich. I'm not talking in finances, but you might be rich in your spirit. You might be rich in love. You might be rich in your giving. Because it's the blessings of God which makes one rich. And he adds no sorrow. You have a right to give your testimony. And church folk don't want to hear your testimony. They don't want to hear your testimony. Your testimony, you could be, listen. You had, yesterday you had nothing. And God took you from nothing and he shifted you into abundance. And then God took you from abundance and he shifted you into overflow. And then God took you from overflow, he shifted you into more than enough. God took you from more than enough and he shifted you now into, to, listen, you started at the bottom, now you're here. And you want to give God praise, you want to glorify God for the things that he's done in your life. And somebody else doesn't want to hear it. Hallelujah, glory to God. Church folk are mad at you now. They're mad because you're blessed. Because I'm blessed, church folk are hating on me. Because I'm blessed, they don't want to hear my testimony. They don't want to hear it because it, it reminds them of something. What does it remind them of? Listen, Sister Maybell stands up and she wants to give a testimony Sunday morning. Pastor, says, anybody got a testimony? Sister Maybell says, I got one, Pastor. Come on down, Sister, and share your testimony. Sister Maybell stands up and she says, I want to give my testimony. I want to give honor and glory to God for the last 26 years of my marriage. My divorce is now final. Hallelujah, glory to God. She starts praising God. Now you sit there with yourself and you say, now you know God hates divorce. I don't know why she come in here giving that testimony and you know God hates divorce. Let me, let me let you know something right now. If that's you. Let me stop you right now. Listen, Sister Maybell says that during the last 20 years of her marriage, she's been married for 26 years, she stands up and she gives a testimony about how good God has been because she got her divorce. Listen, during the last 20 years of her marriage, she's been in an abusive relationship. Oh, you see 
seen her come into the church house with the makeup that was covering the scars that she had over her eyes from being in a boxing match all night. You seen where the makeup tried to cover that. But you didn't see where God covered the, the scars that was on her heart from the things, from the uh, abuse that she went through. You didn't see where God had to cover her mind from keeping her from losing her mind. He covered her head to keep her from losing her mind. You didn't see any of those scars. But when you seen that scar, you went back and you talked about it. So now Sister Maybell comes into church and she says, after 20 years of that physical, emotional, and spiritual abuse, I've got my divorce. Hallelujah. Glory to God. She has a right to praise God. She has a right to praise God. And then she goes on. Her testimony starts telling us. She starts saying that, listen. Uh, 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 she, her testimony now moves where she wants to start talking about her son. Oh, you know her son, the one who used to go to this church. Oh, you know her son, the one who used to go to high school with your sons and your daughters. And uh, the one who dropped out because he got uh, caught up on a bad narcotic habit. Oh, you know that part of the testimony. So now she's sitting there and she's saying, yeah, well, my son, he's in jail now. He's been in prison. And you know that part of her testimony. You know Sister Maybell's son been, went to uh, 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 this church. You know he, he, he dropped out of high school because he got caught. He had a bad narcotic habit. You know that her son is now in prison because he was got caught selling those narcotics that he was using. So now he's in the prison. He, he She comes in the church house and she says, I want to give honor to God because my son in prison got his GED. He got a good enough diploma. That's good enough for me but not for you because you don't want to hear Sister Maybell. My son got a GED. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And not only that but he also went to, while he was in prison, he went and got his law degree. Hallelujah. God be the the glory. And not only did he get his law degree, but now he's working at the firm down the street. You know the one that's handling your case. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sister Maybell, give your testimony, woman. To let somebody know that God is able. And then she moves from talking about her son. And she goes on now and says, I want to give God the honor and glory for, for bringing my daughter home. And you sit there and you say, oh yeah, we know her daughter. She's the same one that used to go to this church also. Matter of fact, we remember when she was hopping in and out of cars doing tricks for favors getting money here and there, doing favors for money. You know that. But now she says that her daughter got her life together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And not only that, but she got her degree in nursing. And now she's the charge nurse on the cardiac unit down at the uh, 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 trauma center right down the street. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. But you don't want to hear Sister Maybell's testimony. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? She got a right to praise God. She got a right to give a, a, a testimony. She stands up and she's earned her right to give her testimony. And some people probably shocked and you probably don't believe this now. You probably don't want to understand what this is happening. And you probably say that that can't be true. I've never heard of such a thing. But let me let you know something. It is true. And it still happened. It happens today and it happened a long time ago in Jesus' time. It happened when Jesus walked the earth. Them, those folk, the church folk didn't want to hear testimonies either. Listen. Follow, follow me, if you will, to uh, 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 the book of John. In the book of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 3, it tells us that Jesus has passed by and he saw a man who had been blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, they said, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Automatically, when somebody sees something that's out of order, they automatically said it was to sin. But what did Jesus say? Let's see what Jesus said. Jesus answered them in verse 3. He said, and it was neither that this man sinned nor his parents that the works of God may be displayed in him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This isn't about a sin. The condition that you're in right now, it may not be about a sin. But the reason that is being done, Jesus said that the works of God may be displayed in him. Listen. You say, well, why did it take 20 years for Sister Mabel to get a divorce? Because God wanted to see the works of God. He wanted you to let you know that the works of God were going to be displayed through her. So she got a right to praise God. God gave her the breakthrough she was waiting on. Hallelujah, she's free from that marriage, that abusive relationship. Hallelujah, her children are on straight street now. They're doing the right things and they're back into the church and they're praising God. But you didn't know that because you didn't want to hear her testimony. Jesus sat there and they said, well, okay, well, what is it? Who? Why is this man blind? He was blind so that the works of God might be displayed through him. The Bible tells us in verse uh, 8, it says that Jesus spit on the ground and he made mud from the saliva and he applied it to the man's eyes. And then he told the man, he said, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. And if so the man left and washed and he came back seeing and his neighbors and those who previously saw him as a beggar, they saw him as a beggar. And the Bible says when they saw him as a beggar, they said, is this not 
not the one who used to sit and beg. And others were saying, no, nah, that's not him. Others were still saying, yes, that's him. But the man was like, no, 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 that can't be him. That, that, that can't be him. But the man said this in itself, of himself. He said, I'm the one. He said, I'm the one. I was the beggar. He said, I'm the one who was blind. He said, that's me. That's me. I used to sit here, but nobody wanted to hear his testimony. They sitting in there arguing now about whether or not he is the one, whether or not he was the blind man. Ask his mother. Ask his father. They said, don't ask us anything. Ask him. Ask him. Listen. The man said, I have a testimony. I want to tell y'all what happened. Nobody wanted to hear what the man had to say. The man said, listen, I started from the bottom. Now I'm here. I got a testimony. Nobody wanted to hear what the man had to say. The man said, I was the blind man. I was the beggar. I got a testimony. Nobody wanted to hear what the man had to say. They didn't want to hear his testimony. Finally, in verse 10, it tells us that they find, somebody finally had enough nerve to ask him. They said, okay, okay, okay. Tell us your testimony. What happened to you? How is it then that your eyes are open? How were your eyes open? And then the man answered. He said, it was the man who is called Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, Jesus made mud and he spread it on my eyes. And he said to me, go to Salome and wash. And I went and washed. He said, I went away and I washed. And he said, and I received my sight. And the people now, the people wanted to know, well, where's Jesus? Where's this guy Jesus? They knew who Jesus was, but they wanted to know, where is Jesus? And he said, the man said, I don't know. He said, I don't know where Jesus is. And they kept, they bought him now. So they said, okay, let's take him to the religious leaders. Because now somebody's going to give a, he's going to give a testimony, and we want to know what happened. The Bible tells us that they took the man into the religious leaders and the religious leaders began to argue and they began to get upset over the blessing that this man had received from Jesus. They're arguing about the blessing. The man didn't ask for the blessing. Jesus chose him. Favor ain't fair, but God chose you. The man down, the, the religious folk are arguing over whether or not the man deserved to have a blessing. Whether or not he deserved to have a blessing. Listen, the Bible tells us that they started arguing over the man. Asking him how was he healed. How was he healed. And who was the blame. Who's the blame. Can you imagine that. Who's the blame for him being blind. They were arguing. The man said, listen. They were hounding him with all kinds of questions. And the man finally said, listen guys, listen, listen, listen. You're all confusing me. You're confusing me. He said, uh, 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 you're asking me all these questions. He said, I can't answer all your questions. He says, all I can tell you is this. Where I was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah, glory to God. He said, you got your proof. You knew I was the blind man. You knew I was the beggar. You knew I started from the bottom, but now I'm here. And I got a testimony. He said, where I I was blind now I see now I see listen you you can argue all day long but the reason he said you can argue all day long but the reasons why I know that I can see is because of God's favor upon my life God's favor he didn't go and ask for healing but healing found him you don't go and ask for the blessing but the blessing found you then this is what God wants us to know this man's story is not like that of blind Bartimaeus oh you remember Bartimaeus he was the one that was on the street corner screaming out Jesus Jesus son of David have mercy on me Jesus he was screaming out to Jesus waiting wanting to receive a blessing but this is why favor ain't fair hallelujah glory to God where that man asked for something and he still got it but God wants us to to know that sometimes you don't have to open your mouth to ask anything. Today is your day of blessing. Zacchaeus, come on down. Today is the day that I'm going to dine with you. The Lord is coming into your home today. This is what God wants us to know. Favor ain't fair, but he chose you. God chose you to do something, to do something great. No matter what it was you didn't qualify for, God said, I chose you today and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. Listen, listen, Jesus chose that man for a blessing. Why? Why did Jesus choose him? The scriptures already told us that the works of God may be displayed in him. The works of God, that they may know that the works of God will be displayed in him. And now people are arguing about him receiving a blessing. Hallelujah, look at that. You sitting there, you mad because God blessed Sister Mabel. Because she, she's now blessed. But you're blessed too. You're blessed too. God chooses to bless us in different ways. Listen, listen. They're arguing over this. But I want to let you know something. That ain't the first time it happened in the Bible either. The Bible lets us know this. It tells us, it says, listen, follow me if you will. You remember um, uh, 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 Mar uh, uh, Martha and, and uh, Mary had a brother named Lazarus. And the Bible tells us that Lazarus had died and they came to get Jesus to, to come and uh, uh, um, uh, 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 
healed Lazarus before he died and Jesus stayed a couple of extra days so he could make sure that Lazarus was good and dead because now when the word came back to Jesus and said, Jesus, Lazarus is dead. And he said, I'm glad. <laughs> Jesus said, I'm glad that Lazarus is dead. You mean he's glad? I'm glad for your sakes. For what? So that you may see the works of God. This is why God blesses us, so that we may see the works of God. You're blessed so that someone else can see the works of God through you. And guess what? Because you're blessed, people are going to hate on you. They're going to hate on you. Here it is, Lazarus was dead. And because Lazarus was dead, people wanted to kill Lazarus because Jesus had raised him up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember when Jesus came and he told him to roll away the stone. And uh, uh, um, Martha, Martha sit there and she says to Jesus, she says, oh, Lord, uh, uh, but when you roll away that stone, there's going to be a stench behind that rock. Let me let you know something right now. Wherever it is you are, there's a stench behind you. You wasn't all sanctified and cleaned up. Wherever it is that Jesus brought you up out of, there's a stench that was on you. The Bible tells us that there was a stench behind it because he's been dead for four days. And Jesus said, did I not say to you that if you believe you will see the glory of God. You're going to see the glory of God when you believe. When you believe. When you believe. Listen. Listen. Here's Lazarus. Lazarus wasn't asking for a thing. Lazarus was laying in, in Abraham's bosom, minding his own business, happy to be where he wanted to be. He is dead. And Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God, Jesus comes along now and he presents Lazarus with a blessing that Lazarus didn't even ask for. And Lazarus didn't ask for it, but Jesus chose to bless him. He chose to bless him. Favor ain't fair, but God chose you. Here it is, John chapter 12, verse 9 through 11. The Bible tells us that the large crowd of Jews, they came, not on the account of Jesus only, but they came so that they may see Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead. But then the verse goes on to tell us in uh, uh, verse 12, it says... Uh, but the, excuse me, verse 10, it says, but the chief priests, the religious folk, but the chief priests, they had planned to put Lazarus to death along with Jesus. Why would you want to put Lazarus to death? What did Lazarus do but receive a blessing? You're hating on Lazarus because he didn't ask for something, but God chose to give him something. So now you're hating on Lazarus. You hate on Lazarus so much that you want to put Lazarus to death along with Jesus. Why? Because on the account of Lazarus, many of the Jews were now going to go away and they were going to be believing in Jesus. Let me let you know something right now. If there's nothing else for you to believe in, you better believe in Jesus. There's nothing else to believe in but you better believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, the Bible lets us know. Listen, church folk are going to hate on you because you're blessed. They wanted to kill Lazarus. They wanted to kill Lazarus. Listen, when, 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 because Jesus had blessed him. Lazarus didn't ask for the blessing. You got blessed with some things that you didn't even know nothing about. And there's still some blessings along your way that God is going to bless you with that you never opened your mouth to ask for. But God is going to bless you. He's going to bless you. And let me let you know something. When God blesses you, he only blesses you, not so that you can say how great you are, but God blesses you for two things. First, so that you can be a blessing unto someone else. And second, the main thing, or really the main thing is that God blesses you so that you can be now a, a, a way maker. In other words, you're the one now who's pointing the way to the blessing giver. Your blessings weren't for you. But it points a direction to the blessing giver. It points a direction back to God. It points a direction to Jesus. Why? Because they're the blessing giver. They're the blessing giver. So, and, and guess what? People are going to sit now and they're going to still suppose that you shouldn't be blessed. You probably don't deserve to be blessed. I don't deserve to be blessed. There's none who are righteous. No, not one. Not one of us deserves anything from God. But favor ain't fair. But God chose you. God blessed you. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. There's nothing that you should feel shameful about because God chose to bless you. And listen, you've been standing in line waiting for a blessing and God's, you told God you wanted this. But God said, I'm going to give you that. And whatever it was that God gave you was worth more than what you wanted. Because God knows how to give you the right blessings at the right time. At the right time. Listen, listen, listen. You probably didn't deserve it. And, and, and this is why where, where we go back to uh, uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 28. When Gabriel, when you hear Gabriel telling Mary that she's blessed and highly favored of the Lord. That's exactly what God is telling you. God is to put your name right there where Mary is. I'll put my name because I don't, you may not want to receive your blessing. Overseer Michael, you are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. 
You're blessed and you're highly favored. That's what God told Mary. That's what God is telling you. You're blessed and you're highly favored. That's what God wants you to know. Mary was blessed and highly favored because she was chosen by God to carry Jesus, the living word, in her womb. And guess what? As a believer of God, you also share that same blessing with Mary. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What do you mean? Because Jesus is the living word, isn't he? Yes. And guess what? Because you know that Jesus is the living word, you carry that word in you. Not in your womb, but in your spirit. You are a carrier of Jesus Christ. Every place you go, you take Jesus with you. I know you want to think that you get through doors because you got your visa or your MasterCard. No. You go through these doors because Jesus is with you. Because God has blessed you. Because God has favored you. And doors supernaturally open for you. Because you go with Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God has blessed you. And this is why he's no respecter of person. He saw to it that Mary was the first one to carry Jesus in her womb. But but then everyone else who became a believer, you and I, we carry Jesus also. We carry the living word in us. And because we carry the word in us, the word now becomes a part of us and this changes our life now. Because we're born again, that we carry the word of God through ourselves. Listen, God has given us life and he's given us abundant life. God has given us sufficiency in all things that grace abounds towards. God has blessed you beyond measure. You're blessed beyond measure. You're blessed beyond measure. Listen. Doors right now, even as you're listening to this message, doors, supernaturally, doors are opening for you right now. You don't have to uh, uh, have somebody convince you what the word of God is spoken over your life. You know it yourself. And guess what God even tells you after that? He says that I, hallelujah, glory to God. God says that I will bless those who bless you. This is why, you know, people always want to talk and they talk about, about uh, oh, well, you must be really lucky. You must be really lucky. I see all the things God doing in your life. Let me tell you something. I'm not lucky. It's not luck. We're blessed. You know what happens with luck? You get, you get bad luck. You get good luck. You get no luck. And guess what happens to luck? Luck runs out. But when you get blessed, you're blessed eternal. And blessing eternally means that you never run out of God's blessings. Never run out. Never run out. I know you go over to Popeye's and you want to get that chicken sandwich because they said that's the best chicken sandwich. And by the time you got there, they said that we don't have any more chicken sandwiches. We ran out. You, you, you thought it was a blessing for you to go and get that chicken sandwich. But when you got there, you said that you found out that they ran out. But hallelujah, when you get before God, you find out that you never run out of blessings. He never runs out of blessings. You can't beat God's giving. You can't beat God's blessing. God blesses you and he blesses you and he blesses you richly. To you're overflowing with blessings. You're overflowing with blessings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, so favor ain't fair. Don't worry about what the naysayers say. Favor ain't fair. But God chose you. God blessed you. He blessed you. God blessed you so much in your past that you know that your future is blessed because you're still walking with God. And the Bible lets us know that the steps of a good man, I, I say it this way because it's universal, unisexual. The steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. So every step you take, there's a blessing there that you should receive from God. God knows where you're going to be down the road and he's already prepared something for you down the road even when you look to say that the end of the road will be eternity with heaven and with Christ Jesus what did Jesus say he said I go and prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also down the road he said in my father's house there are many rent mansions if it were not so I would have told you this is what God wants you to see I've not only prepared a blessing for you in your past but I prepare a blessing for you in your present and as you continue to walk with me in the future, there's always a blessing stored up for you. You are blessed. You're blessed because you're blessed. It's because you're blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen. Listen. I, I, I got to get out of your way. I, I, I feel like I've gone longer than I, than I should have because I understand that this is just because this is just because we had a little malfunction. But let me let you know something. Whether or not you realize it, God made sure. This is why God knows more than you do. God put your eyes in the front of your head, not the back. Why? Because you don't need to remember everything that's back there. Some things God wants you to leave back there.
But everything that's before you is the best for you. This is what God wants you to see. Stay focused on those things that are before you. Go and receive those things that God has before you. Don't stop and stay where, where God didn't ask you to stop and stay. But he's expecting you and I to continue to go forward and receive the blessings that God has prepared for you. You're blessed because God has called you blessed. He's called you out. He called you out of the world and separated you to himself. He called you out. And he blessed you. He blessed you. And guess what? Because God has blessed you, you're not cursed. And because you're not cursed, listen, because you're, you're God's inheritance. You are the inheritance of the Lord. And guess what? Because of that, there's not a, a, a curse that can stand against you. There's not a spell that someone can cast against you. And you'd be surprised how many believers call me and tell me that they believe someone got a spell on them. They believe someone put a, hurt, a, a, a hex on them. Listen, are you a believer? Are you a child of the king? If you say you're washed in the blood of Jesus, let me let you know something. The blood of Jesus speaks on your behalf. The blood of Jesus speaks great things for you and no matter how many fiery darts that devil wants to pull out of his quiver and aim his bowstrings at you, let me let you know something. That blood of Jesus blocks it. Did not the word just tell us that God sets a shield of favor around you? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, Christian. Listen. You need to start exercising these things that God has spoken over your life. You don't need to have somebody else tell you what God is telling you. You need to start exercising these things for yourself. I want to let you know, as I said, when you wake up in the morning, you open your eyes. The devil is already trembling because he knows what's in you. The devil knows what's in you. But the question is, do you know what's in you? Because, see, the devil trembles because he knows that the day that, that you really get an opportunity to have revelation come across your mind, when your feet hit the floor, it'll be just like Jesus when he went out, when he got out of the boat and the, the demon possessed man came running down out of the tomb. Nothing happened when Jesus was on the water, but when his foot hit that dry land, when your foot hits that atmosphere, that devil begins to quake because he knows now that the atmosphere has been shifted. And this is what God wants you to see. You walk in that shifting because you're blessed, because you're blessed. Don't let no one tell you you're not what God has already said you are. You're blessed and highly favored of God. And, and listen, listen, because of that, because of that, when others are going down, you're rising up. Your business is going up. Your finances are going up. Your health is going up because you're blessed. It's because you're blessed. Favor ain't fair, but God chose you. He chose to give it to you. So you don't have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to fret, nothing to fear. God has blessed you beyond measure. You're blessed beyond measure. You're blessed beyond measure. And like I said, don't let Mary J be the only one to tell you that she likes what she sees when she's looking at me as she's walking past the mirror. No, that's your proclamation. You like what you see. Because when you see yourself in the mirror, you should look and see Jesus. Because that's what God sees. You don't deserve, I don't deserve, we don't deserve anything from God. We don't. But God blesses us anyhow. Not because how good we are. But God blesses us, as I said, so that we can uh, uh, be a direction, so that we can point people to the blessing giver. And you're blessed so that God, God blesses you so that you can be a blessing unto others. Amen? Amen. God bless you again. Listen, I thank you all for, for uh, bearing with us today. As I said, we started off a little uh, on the rough side, but... To God be the glory. We're going to get some things straight and, and, and we just give God praise, honor, and glory. I thank you that you thought not of yourself to come and to fellowship with us here at Manor from Heaven Ministries. We know that God is doing a great work in this part of the vineyard and we truly believe he's doing a great work where you are also. But let me let you know something. If you don't know Jesus for the pardon of your sins, you can think you're blessed, but then you would be the one that I would say that's lucky. And I would also tell you that being lucky, your luck is going to run out. Eventually, your luck is going to run out. But if you uh, become a Christian, if you become a believer, you're not lucky, but you become blessed. And you're going to be blessed eternally. And if that's you and you said, I don't know Jesus, but I want to receive Jesus Christ today, then this is all you have to do. Just believe in your heart. Just believe in your heart that God raised Jesus, that Jesus came into this world to die a sinner's death so that a person like you and I could believe on him and receive salvation. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10, it says that if a person believes in his heart and confesses that Jesus is Lord, then you shall be saved. That's all it is. 
And if you're saved, you're able to do that now. You say, Jesus, come into my life. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a right spirit. That's your spirit. Do for me what I can't do for myself because I've messed things up along the way. But I don't want to mess up anymore. And I don't want to live this life that I've been living. And Father God, most importantly, I know that if you cook me out of this body, this vessel today, and you call me out, I know that after I receive Jesus, I will spend eternity in your presence. And if that's you and you just received Jesus now, to God be the glory. We welcome you into this family of believers. We welcome you into the family of Christ. And listen, anything that God has promised from, 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 from the Bible, it belongs to you. It belongs to you. God is no respecter of person. You're his child now. And guess what that means? That means that God is obligated to take care of you. And if you need help along this way, which I know you will, I want you to reach out to me. You can reach me through Facebook. Messenger, you can reach me through WhatsApp, you can reach me through my email, you can email me at armstrong1mr at hotmail.com because you cannot make this Christian journey by yourself. And what I want to do is I want to, if I can't uh, locate you a good Bible teaching, Bible preaching church in your area, I'll keep you connected to myself until God will give us a place where we can send you that you can continue to walk this Christian walk, that you can continue to be nourished in the word of God. Amen? Amen. Well, good. again, I just thank you all. I just want to bless you. I want to pray for you before we leave here that God will continue to do what God said he's going to do in your life. God is faithful. We're the ones who's not. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who came today. We pray that they receive this life-changing word, Lord. We pray that as they enter out of this sanctuary, Lord, that they may know that they are blessed, that they are blessed of you. Father, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Father, that they are the righteousness of you through Christ Jesus. Father, allow them to know that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. Father, allow them to know that greater is he, you, who is in them than he that is in the world, the devil. Father, allow them to know that because they are yours, O oh Lord, that you have not lost one, not a one except Judas, that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And Father, I speak a healing over these vessels now. Those who are going through a, a illness in their bodies. I speak a healing now in the name of Jesus. I speak wholeness. I speak recovery in the name of Jesus. For those who are dealing with bereavement in their families, I pray that the comforter will come and sit and rest upon them now in the name of Jesus. Father, let the comforter do what it was purposed to do in their lives, that they may be able to say it is well with my soul in the name of Jesus. And Father, for those who are dealing with financial difficulties now, Father, we know that you own a cattle on a thousand hills. We know that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. I pray now, Father, that you will reach in, O oh Lord, and touch them with an abundance of wealth that they may need now, that they may need it, O oh Lord, as you told Peter to go and to, uh, to cast his rod into the, the lake and there was enough to cover the need of Peter and Jesus. Father, we know that when you bless your children with a financial blessing, that they will have more than enough. And show them, O oh Lord, that their blessing is not for themselves, but for them to be a blessing unto someone else also in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, Father, we have not because we ask not. And right now, Lord, we ask for your spirit to continue to watch over us as we go through this month of grace. We ask for your spirit to continue to watch over us, continue to be with us, continue to lead us and to guide us in all truths and knowledge of your word. In the name of Jesus, we say, amen, amen, and amen again. Listen, you are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. And if no one else ever told you that, you've heard it here today. And if, you, if someone else that you know needs to hear this, this message is available for them. They can download it. You can forward it over to them and let them know. This is what you've been waiting for. They've been waiting to hear that. Because, you know, like I said, we always go to the church and somebody tells you, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor this. Turn to your neighbor. Your neighbor don't need this message. You didn't come here today to hear a message for your neighbor. You came today to hear a message for yourself. So you put your hands upon yourself. You tell yourself, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. That's what you tell yourself in the name of Jesus. God bless you. May God cover you and keep you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you are being blessed by the words from Manna from Heaven Ministries and would like to give a donation or a contribution, please go to the link below. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.